Hi, George here. And what I'd like to do in this video is do a pre-use check on the Evita XL ventilator made by Traeger. Now, in order to do the pre-use check on the ventilator, well, there's a couple things that you're going to need. One of the things you're going to need is a test lung like this, or some variation of a test lung. You'll also need a circuit plug, like this right over here. But don't worry, if you don't have the test or the uh, circuit plug, what you can use is the built-in plug that the ventilator has incorporated into its external features right over here. So you can take your uh, Y piece and when it's time to do the circuit test, you can plug the circuit off right over here for it. And it's also a place that you can store the ventilator circuit attached to the ventilator after you're done doing the, doing the pre-use check on the ventilator to keep that internal component of the circuit nice and clean until it's ready to be used on the the patient. So now to do this pre-use check, we need to turn the ventilator on and then find the menu of how to do it. So make sure everything's plugged in. I've got it all plugged in. And it's also a good idea with these ventilators when you're doing pre-use checks, especially with the pre-use checks that are very uh, involved with the ventilators, have them positioned so that you can access your electrical plug-in or your pneumatic gas sources quite easily so that you're not running back and forth between two different spots. So I've got this configured in such a way and the wheels are locked into place. My station outlets are right down here, you can't really see them, but that's where everything's plugged in nice and convenient for me so I can do this, this pre-use check. So before we access the pre-use check, we need to turn the ventilator on and then put the ventilator properly into standby and then access the menu for the pre-use check or the device check. So I'm gonna go to the back of the machine. Remember the on-off switch is at the back. I'm gonna turn the ventilator on. You're going to hear an alarm, fires up, find my remote, it's here somewhere, I'm going to zoom in a bit because I want you to see the screen and how to put this into standby. So it's doing its little power on test right now. It's in this start um, configuration but we want to put it into standby and it's a couple step procedure for putting the ventilator in standby. Hit the standby tab right over here, so we hit the standby tab. Click on the button right over here to confirm it. Then it says to confirm standby, touch the alarm set, reset and confirm. So here's the alarm reset, we'll touch that. We'll confirm that. Now the ventilator, when you see that nice big bright yellow sign on there, it confirms that the ventilator is in fact standby. So now how do you do the device check? Well on the ventilator, in this menu anyways, there's a bunch of these drop down tabs right over here. And the one you're looking for is this one and it says check. And what that stands for is the device check for doing the pre-use check on the ventilator. So we're going to activate this tabby and then it brings in a couple of other sub um, files if you will or sub tabs. The one we want to do is the device check. And there's two of them here, the device check and the airtight check. They're two separate tests or two separate checks. The device check looks after the components of the ventilator per se. The airtight check specifically looks at uh, checking the integrity of the ventilator circuit. So before you use the ventilator, make sure all the connections on your external circuit are nice and tight so that you don't have any leaks when you do the airtight check. So we're going to activate the device check. And these are all the different things that it does for the device check. And I'm not sure if you can read it, but I can't really zoom in anymore with the uh, camera. So what we need to do is follow the directions that will be displayed right over here. Just simply, when we follow the directions, do the action and the ventilator will automatically do the device check procedure or parts for us. So the first thing you need to do to start the check is to hit this or touch this little tab right here that says check. So we're going to touch that. Now it says check correct position of the exhalation valve. If you remember, the exhalation valve is just underneath the ventilator right over here. So I've taken a look at it and it seems to be in its right spot, it's configured properly. So we're going to go and hit the tab that says yes. So we've touched that, now it says connect the test lung to the Y piece, confirm with yes. So this is where our test lung comes into play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the test lung, I'm going to connect it up right over here. I'm going to take the circuit off the support like so and I'm simply going to place the test lung on the top of the ventilator. If you had a chair or something like that, you could also place it on a chair, just so that it's not putting ex any extra weight on the circuit itself. So we're gonna zoom back in. Right there. 
connect test line to Y piece. We've done that. Confirm with yes. So just on the bottom here, hit yes. Now it says check. Check is active. Please wait. So we're just going to wait. Now it says check. Correct position to the flow sensor. We're looking at the flow sensor at the bottom. Yeah, it seems to be in the right spot. Hit yes. Uh, Neo flow sensor placed at the patient. Why? No, we don't have a Neo flow sensor incorporated. Is the humidifier ready for use? Yes. Patient hoses connected correctly? Yes. Connect test lung to Y piece confirm with yes. Yes. Now it says connect air supply. Disconnect oxygen supply. So we're going to disconnect the oxygen from the um, the station outlet. So you'll hear the gas hissing as I'm doing this. There. It's disconnected. It says now check is active. Please activate. Or please wait, not activate. Now it says connect the oxygen supply, disconnect the air. So I'm simply hooking up with the DISS connection, the high pressure oxygen hose back to the station outlet, and disconnecting the air. So the air supply is disconnected, it'll do its check. Check is active, please wait. Wait. Now it says connect the air and oxygen supply. So Hooking back the high pressure air hose to the station outlet. It says audible alarm sound check, confirm with yes. Do it quickly so you don't drive people crazy. Now it says flow calibration, calibration is okay. It says disconnect seal neo flow sensor press, uh, press whatever button, confirm. We're gonna go to next test because we don't have the neo flow device in place. Now it's doing its oxygen calibration. So this is where it checks the built-in fuel cell for the oxygen analyzer that's incorporated into this ventilator. Do, 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 doing the calibration of the oxygen fuel cell for the oxygen monitor again. Do, 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 waiting for that to take place. Shouldn't take too long, hopefully. We've got some dead air right over here that I kind of have to fill with my voice. Calibration's okay, right on. Now, we don't have any CO2 monitoring devices like that end title CO2 monitoring devices turned on right now. If we did, we would do the next test, which is the CO2 sensor zero test and the CO2 one. We would do a check on that. So at this point in time, we're done really all the checks. The ventilator is gonna stay like this. So in order for you to move on to set the ventilator up, on a patient, you'd have to take it out of this menu and move forward to selecting the mode and then adjusting your ventilation dynamics that way and then setting up for your patient and putting it on your patient. But before we do that, we want to do the next device check and that's the airtight check. So we're going to hit the tab that says airtight check and then all we have to do is follow the directions that it is going to display right over here. So to get the check running, simply hit the word check. Now it says seal the Y piece, confirm with yes. So this is where you need that circuit plug. So I'm going to take the ventilator, the test lung off the ventilator. So I just took the test lung off the ventilator. I'm going to place the circuit back on the holder right over here like so. Now I'm going to take this cap and I'm going to cap the circuit right over there like that. And then I'm going to confirm with Yes. So zoom back in so you can see that. It says check is active, please wait. So that's what we're going to do. And now it's going to pressurize the circuit. It'll do a compliance calculation on the circuit as well and check to see if there's any leaks. I'm still here, I haven't gone anywhere. Now it says keep Y piece open, confirm with yes. So we're gonna simply take this plug off the circuit and we'll hit yes down there. It says check is active, please wait.
and it's done. It doesn't tell you that it's done, but it is in fact done. It tells us the compliance of the circuit is 1.9 mils per centimeter of water and that there is no leakage. So there's zero mils for leakage. So you could say this ventilator circuit is tight. It is good. So there's no leaks on our system. This ventilator has now been checked out and the checks uh, worked well for us and the ventilator is ready to be used on our adult patient with this adult circuit. So it's going to stay in standby like this until you take it out uh, or until you choose a different um, window so you can program the type of mode that you want and the ventilation dynamics into that mode. And then you'd have to take it out of standby and place it on your patient for use. So I'll just kind of show you how to do that without putting it on a patient. All you need to do is hit this button right there, that'll close everything. Go to your side menu, right over here that you can see, hit the ventilator settings. That brings up the different mode selections and automatically defaults to SIMV volume ventilation. These are your mode tabs right over here, just simply choose whatever mode tab that you wanted. Select the value or the ventilation dynamic that you want to program. Use this rotary knob right over here to adjust the value of that uh, ventilation dynamic and then touch it here to confirm that value so that it locks it in. And that's in essence how you would uh, turn the ventilator on and do a pre-use check on the ventilator. I think that's pretty well it. So if you have any questions, please let me know. If you happen to like this video or not like the video, let me know with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If you get a chance, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's a lot of different videos on ventilators, oxygen therapy, as well as airways and airway management. And I'm gonna be adding, as long as I can, more and more videos all the time to my channel as time permits. So, hope you found this of value. Take care, have a great day. This is me gone for now.